Hello and welcome to Clay to Canopy, the show where I attempt to make just about everything from the ground up. In this video, I am going to make a stack laminated peanut shaped throne. So come on, let's do this. many days out on my front porch feeding a little squirrel that I have named Charles. He comes running up to me, stands up on his hind legs, and does this cutest begging thing ever. Begging for his peanuts. And so I get him some peanuts and he goes to town running all over trying to bury those peanuts. He has inspired me to make a peanut shaped throne to sit at this woodland feast table. Before I can get to doing any kind of wood stacking, I need to first figure out what I need for materials and to do that, I'm going to go ahead and make a cardboard model. The great thing about the cardboard model is I will then be able to have sheets that will become my templates and those template sheets I can then put right over the wood pieces and use them as a cutout. Now the cost of things right now is pretty high. Wood prices have gone up. Even regular old pine has greatly gone up. So I want to make sure that I work this out beforehand and I can really get down to what I need for the wood. Now this is going to be a very crude model, but it is going to be a technique that I have used in the past, teaching some of my students on how to stack cardboard and build up volumetric shapes. This is not in the cat video that I made with the Haunted Mansion. This is a different technique. So if you are my student, this is me putting it into practice. And I'm not just having you cut up a bunch of cardboard if you are going to be a sculptor, it is something that you might use in your future. Anyhow, here we go. I'm just gonna go to town, cutting up a bunch of stuff and working out things and I need to just pull out the peanut shape in my head. And I'm gonna primarily use the bandsaw just to speed up time. I'm gonna go with much lower seating because I want the table in this set to be much lower as well. This is not gonna be your typical dining table for I am going to make my seating at 14 inches where the height of the seat hits. Normally a dining chair is anywhere between 16 to 18 inches. That's the comfortable height. I'm a bit short, so 14 inches would probably be okay. I don't know, there's something about being out in nature. You wanna be closer to the ground. Initially, my first idea to have pillow seating, just because I wanted that contact with the ground, So this is exactly why model making is important. These proportions are way out of whack. I have too much going on on the back. And so I'm gonna rip off some of this because I don't need it. I don't wanna take off too much over here because this is the seat part. I'm just do a quick spin here and you can take a look at the full model. But I think this is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the proportions of this. So I priced out the cost of the peanut and it was about 150 bucks. That's not even including tax and that is not anything extra in case I go over. To prep for the next environment, I need to clean this mess. This is like a disaster area. This entire patio area, uh, driveway area, it needs to get completely wiped out, cleaned out, and I need to start over because I need this space for the upcoming environment after this woodland feast. One of the things that I was going to deal with was getting rid of these planter boxes. They're cedar planter boxes. I made for this area about three years ago, and after much trial and error and trying to plant up these area, we realized that the only time we can really grow in this area is in the winter time for a couple of months. The sun that happens in this area is just way too hot and it ends up burning out all the plants. I was going to just empty out these boxes and put them on the sidewalk and see if somebody wanted them. It's not that they're not good boxes. The ones that I have in the backyard that are in, in the garden area, they work out fine. I'm gonna be taking those anyway because Sarah has decided that she prefers to use terracotta pots. What I'm going to do is going to empty all of them out and I'm gonna reclaim this wood. This wood is gonna become the wood that I use for the peanut and I think it's all fitting since I'm using uh, Christmas trees to create the table. I'm gonna pull apart these boxes and I'm going to to run the wood through the planer after they dry up a bit. All right, so I got a lot of work to do here. I 
I have got to get a move on with milling up these boards that have been drying out. And as you can see, this is like mid-progress. I've got molds going on, I have glasswork going on, and I need to get these boards milled up because this is going to be a staged process. I'm going to go ahead and do one round of milling, taking off a very thin amount, and then I'll have to come back in a couple days and take off some more so that I can begin cutting out the pattern shapes and gluing up my stack. I'm going to be running these pieces first through my joiner and then through my planer. If you would like to know more about a joiner and planer, I do have a video on how to use a joiner and planer that reminds me. If you are not subscribed already and you are enjoying my content, please hit that subscribe button, like, and share. Also, it really does help me out. All right, so I'm just gonna get to it. I'm gonna get to work and get milling up my pieces. It has been days of me milling and milling wood back there. I've altered this model to give me a bit of a backrest. I was not liking the flatness of this, so I have an opening cut out here. I'm gonna kind of dish this in. The other thing is I need three layers of this stuff to get me one thickness. I'm not like 100% happy with the profile of this. I am going to be altering every other one. So I'm gonna start with the main middle one. That will be three boards thick. The next one will be two. The one after that will be three thick and then two, you know, and I'm gonna alter that the whole way through so that I get a little bit more accurate profile of the peanut. Now, there's one other thing that I need to mention and I hope that I don't end up screwing this totally up. In an effort to save on thickness, and to use the most of the wood that I possibly could, I had to mill in multiple thicknesses. So I have a stack over there that's the thickest stack and then it gets thinner and thinner and thinner. And that was because I had to keep taking off a little more and a little more to get them as clean as I possibly could. If I evened out all the thickness, that meant that all of them had to become the skinniest possible thing and I'd lose even more thickness to the overall sculpture. That means that I have four different thicknesses going on. Nope. Five, five different thicknesses going on. And why does this matter? Well, when it comes to doing the glue up, if I'm not matching the same thickness up for each layer, I'm gonna shoot myself in the foot and I'm gonna have an uneven stack and it's not gonna go together in a glue up and I'm gonna have massive gapping. So I need to be real careful that I don't go and screw this up and pull two pieces of the wrong thickness together in my layering. Hopefully, um, all will go well. The next move before I can start dealing with that layering is to take apart this model. I need to rip it apart so I can have the template. This is another long, tedious process. It is going to take me an age to get things stacked into the block form before I can even begin carving. I mean, I know I got a lot of clamps, but I don't have nearly enough clamps to do this entire thing all at once. So. Um, yeah, I'm in it. These are the kind of projects I always end up with, right? Things that take an age. Always takes an age here at Clay to Canopy. Everything I, I do takes an age. So I need to keep this throat and at least one of them completely even. This is gonna become my router guide so that every time I stack a new layer, I can make sure that this square is even. Once one is good, I can just come in and clean up the next layer. Now I have to decide how I wanna do this glue up. Do I wanna break the rules? Or do I want to follow the rule? One option is to clamp up all these layers and then I'd be struggling to try and get the clamps on to try and keep them all one even layer. The other option is to break the rules of woodworking and to use some screws as my clamps. When the glue dries, I can then remove the screws. What that's gonna do is leave me some screw holes. Since this is already recycled wood that has screw holes going on in it, adding some more screws, it's not gonna really take away from the piece too much. One, two, three. This is the fourth glue up of my double stack layers. The ones that are gonna be triple, I will have to go back after they completely dry and I route out the inside to add that third layer. So I just wanna get everything that needs two layers done. Hopefully I can get it all done today. I am going to start adding the third layer, but before I can add the third layer to any of these, I need to trim down my shape 
And I also need to cut out the negative space here so that I can make sure that the void that goes running through the middle of this peanut is even as I can possibly get it. First thing I'm gonna do is take off the excess on my bandsaw. I will cut close as I feel comfortable to the inside of this and then I will finish that off with the router using these edges as my guide. moving right along with this peanut. I have my layers rough cut out. It ended up being just enough wood, so I don't need to purchase any extra wood. The next thing that I need to do, which is gonna be incredibly important, is to make sure that my bottom edge of the peanut and the top edge of the seat are exactly the same on all of the layers before I do my giant glue up for the whole stack. It's gonna be best to take care of this situation now as best I can and then make sure that when I do the glue up, I try and align everything as perfectly as I possibly can. I cut a piece of plywood at 14 inches. I have now just screwed one of my first pieces, my layered piece to that plywood so I can use the edge as a template when I flush trim with the router. So what this is gonna do is give me a perfectly flat bottom and a perfectly flat top. And if I repeat this by taking this piece and screwing it to all of my template patterns, in theory, I should have a perfectly square um, top and bottom pieces that match for all of the set so that when I do do the glue up, the bottom of this peanut sits flat and the top will be flush. That is the theory. So. This bit had a bad glue up, uh, didn't quite land and it's raised. So before I go smacking this onto this, I'm gonna have to do some hand cleaning. This is the last glue up of the peanut. Talk about stress. This is it, right? This is the last freaking glue up and this could totally screw up everything if I don't do it right. This is all of these weeks of gluing up this process and this one glue up could screw me. No pressure at all, no pressure at all. You know what I'm feeling? I'm feeling strap clamping. Last resort. All right, I think that's it. It is what it is. All right, y'all, it is time to start carving this beast. And I have been putting this off because Though this has probably got to be my favorite process in woodworking, it is also the one process that has wreaked havoc on my hands the most. I really just love using the grinder to carve, but the vibration of the tool really jacks up my nerves and my hands. So I will be using some jackhammer gloves and I'm gonna be suiting up. I'm going to try to work as quickly as I can, but I also know that I probably am gonna need to be taking some breaks. And this is gonna make one whole hell of a mess. God, I swear, every time this camera just goes on, there's like nothing but noise around here. I'm gonna be using my Holy Galahan bit on the grinder. This is a medium coarse. I love this thing. These bits are pretty expensive. This one's kind of thrashed, losing some teeth on it. I'm not gonna talk much. This is just a kind of a get the job done type of deal. So um, yeah, here we go. Well, 
as predicted, I'm a freaking mess. Um, I got the bulk of the block gone, you know, breaking down the edges. I have a little bit more to do to get rid of just this underside, and then I gotta do some rounding off and some shaping. I had ultimately planned on smoothing this out, but it is a peanut, and peanuts have that textured shell, and as I was looking at the grinder marks that are happening over this piece, I kind of dig in it. It's gonna leave it rough, and I don't know what that's gonna do when I put an oil on it. Because I wanna try and do that, I gotta go in and bust out some texture where I had not planned on originally putting texture. There is gonna be a seat cushion here. I'm gonna stitch a cushion, cushion, ah, no, I'm gonna stitch a cushion that looks like a peanut. The shelled part of the peanut, something in a mahogany-ish, uh, brownish, color that so looks like the skin on that peanut. And I need to bust out some of this. This is too blocky for me. I gotta round this off a bit. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna keep working as I'm a mess and switching back and forth, covered in sawdust and everything else is covered in sawdust. All right, let's do this. All right, y'all, I need to throw in a safety warning here. Woodworking tools and machinery are highly dangerous and you should not attempt to operate them without formal training. I have been a woodworker for rule of over 20 years now and I have had formal training on how to use the equipment and machinery. So please do not attempt to try and pick up equipment at home without any proper training. Make sure you read all of your safety manuals, take all safety precautions. I am super happy with the shape. I think I finally got it to where I want it. And I am gonna hit it with my butane torch to bring out some of that texture before I put on some teak oil. Should note I do have a fire extinguisher standing by and I am working in a completely open garage. I always say that. Check out my garden tours. You'll totally see that area behind the camera. I've given the peanuts two coats of oil at the moment. I'm gonna be throwing on a third. And I have cut up a piece of plywood on my bandsaw and a piece that's gonna go on the bottom. So this is gonna become the seat cushion and I will be double stacking these. And this square one, rectangle one, sits inside. What I have picked up for the seat covering is some silky fabrics that I got at Joann's. Not upholstery fabric, they are made for apparel. I'm a very textural person. I don't know, I thought it needed to be something shiny, something silky. Yes, it's a functional chair, but it's primarily a sculpture. I take that into consideration and have a little bit of artistic freedom using those materials. I'm also gonna be using cotton for the mushroom. In cases like that, I tend to back them with a little bit of extra fabric, and I understand that the wear and tear, if it was a normal piece of furniture, would not last as long if it was not a proper piece of upholstery fabric. In the case of this peanut, it's not gonna matter too much. This top of the seat cover is gonna be this reddish brown that I have going on and I'm gonna be using this upholstery foam to cover over that. And then I'm going to stitch with the remaining fabric a large bean-sized cushion. But I want to imply the peeling. I am going to use this creamish color as the inside of the peanut and then I will take this red and make it look like it's a skin around the top of the cushion.
I'm gonna go ahead and stuff this and finish this up. This will be a couch assignment to finish stuffing this and sealing up the seam. And then the seat, this was last night's couch project to hand stitch this rope around the edge. I just went with this natural rope just so that it looks a little bit more like maybe the fibers on the inside of your peanut but also to finish up the edge where it meets on the, every time I say peanut, the little peanut keeps looking over here. Hi, baby girl. Yeah, mama. <laughs> She's outside enjoying sunshine and listening to me talk and I keep saying peanut and she keeps looking over. Um, anyhow, this seat I think is good. It's really comfortable. I sat on it. The peanut itself is not ready yet. It needs to have a couple more coats of teak oil and then some wax for sure. All right, y'all, here she is finished. Um, really happy with the way this turned out. I have my cushion here on the top and then inside here is a storage space to store, I don't know, store whatever. But you know, I, I can't help myself. I like hidden compartments and things. I like having these spaces that could be utilized for something else. It is a little bit raw and unfinished. You don't normally put finish inside drawers or things that are gonna be contained. I may go in later on and line that with some extra wood or something, but for now it is gonna be what it is and I'm gonna move on to the next project. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe and stick around to watch the rest of the Woodland Feast come together.